we've been talking about um, prosperity, expansion, and then um, dealing with opposition. And part of doing that is understanding uh, the threefold position, right? To deal with opposition, you can't deal with opposition unless you know how to prosper or it will eat you. Opposition will eat you because usually where you're being opposed is where you're poor. It's not necessarily where you're strong. When you go to do the thing, the assignment God has asked you to do, it's where you're poor that you'll be attacked. It's not where you're rich. It's, it's, you're, they're wanting to subtract even more from where uh, an area where they've been, uh, the demonic has subtracted from you before. So it's in, like an easy prey. They don't like to mess with your rich areas necessarily because that's where you're in wealth with the word. If you're in wealth and you're empowered and you're strong in that area. So wherever you're poor, they want to touch that again um, over and over um, with a subtraction. So I'm going to read from um, Proverbs here. When it comes to the poor, it's a wild thing. You go through Proverbs and you, you read about the wealthy or the rich, and then um, the poor is mentioned over and over, over. The Bible says there will always be the poor among you. Well, in some sense, we're always, you know, might be talking financial a little bit more there, but there, there's always an area that we're poor. We're never completely rich. Now we get home to heaven in our original state, you know, we get restored to that. Well, <laughs> complete in him, right? So as we, as we uh, confess that here, what we're really doing is pulling heaven down uh, to the earth so that it can manifest in us that we are complete in him now. But we'll work on one area and we'll get that fortified and rich and then we're like, ah, oh, here's a poor area. And then we gotta, we're constantly um, you know, moving stuff around in the heavenly bank account, getting it down and um, you know, uh, uh, feeding those poor areas so they, they can come up and be rich in God. And that's what the blessing does. One of the scriptures is Proverbs uh, 14, and it says, and you don't have to pull this up, but um, it says, uh, verse 31, he who oppresses the poor taunts and insults his maker. And there's three other spots where this is found. Same thing is said. When you oppress the poor, uh, there's a taunting and an insult to God. When we do that, well, you have to look up the word then oppress and oppress is to weigh down or make heavy, um, to push in on uh, a poor person. Well, we're all poor in some area, right? So, um, what happens, have you ever noticed, I don't care if it's chickens or dogs or, I mean, we've raised a lot of different animals. It, it's wild. Even in the animal kingdom, if they find something that is poor, there's something not functioning right or whatever, they will kill that animal. They will turn on it. Um, we've, we've raised puppies. Well, we just had a, a small batch of bunnies, and I don't know what's going on with the mother, but she's like, I don't like this one. She just flicked it out and uh, killed it, and she's favoring this one little bunny. And, uh, and so it's really interesting. She may know that there's something not right with it. She must just be crazy in her head. I don't know. But there's something, there's something about where they'll just turn on that. And you'll see it um, <laughs> with human beings, even in, uh, you can look at grade school, high school, junior high. If somebody has a weakness, it's like that's the person that has to be picked on. That's not where we build people up and go, oh, there's a weakness here. Here, let me help you out. I'll pick on the stronger one. He can take it kind of thing. Nope. It's always, let's find out what your weakness is, almost. And then that makes me feel more safe because I feel more powerful if I can pick on your weak area. It edifies me to know that I'm more strong in that area than you are is really what, what, what's happening in that type of domination. So to... Um, to come against the poor, that means in any area, he who oppresses them taunts and insults God. It's like, you know, as, as we're, let's say we were doing that, we were pressing in on a poor person or uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, doesn't matter. We're pressing in. It's like a, a taunting. I mean, when you think about that, it's almost like we're hanging that out in front of God, like, you ain't going to do nothing about it. I'm going to go ahead and and uh, and oppress this person. It's not like you're going to do anything about it. You don't want to taunt like that, you know. Um, this, his maker is the Lord. And he who is kind and merciful and gracious to the needy honors him. So when we're learning about um, prosperity, we have to realize we're all poor in some area. So wherever I have riches, I'm going to want to, I'm like, 
who, who needs some of what I have? And we want to be shored up to the point that we have an overflow. Pressed down, shaken together, right? Um, God gives in to us. And then we're to, it's just hanging out all over where we just can't help but just give a bunch away. But still, even for people who are very financially prosperous or emotionally prosperous or whatever, I mean, there's always an area that needs to be shored up. Now, if you get stuck on that one area, um, the devil will use that one area. If you can see other areas are rich in your life and you know how to be successful in those areas, that area that keeps coming up poor will irritate the crud out of you. And if it irritates you long enough, it'll condemn you. Like, who do you think you are over here being rich in these other areas? Look at this. Look at how poor you are right here. See, so part of opposition is um, the devil will come and try to oppress your poor area and taunt, right? Like, I'm messing with God's child. What's he going to do about it? I'm messing with them emotionally. I'm messing with them spiritually. I'm, I'm, I'm going to subtract from them even more. I mean, what's God going to do? You, you are taunting, right, in front of the maker of this person. How arrogant is that? Right? That's what the devil does. But there's pride causes you to get stupid, right? And so, in, the, in a way, the devil's pretty crafty, but he's stupid because he's He's covered in pride, and so the, the demonic realm that he trains, the same thing. They're just following his lead, and sin is on them. And so in their, in their wisdom, they're fools. And so you, you go ahead, and you mess with a poor person long enough. You are taunting its maker, his maker, her maker, right? And you're, you're doing that like a, a, like a mockery or whatever, like as if God's not going to do something about it. Oh, contraire. My friend, <laughs> you do not mess with that. He who oppresses the poor taunts and insults his maker. And he who is kind and merciful and gracious to the needy honors him. So here's then what happens in the pecking order thing that I talked about. Like, like we had a, a, a wounded chicken, and I just never thought chickens would turn on chickens, but they do. They're over there pecking and pecking, and it's like, leave him, leave her alone, leave her alone. But no, they just wanted to peck her to death, right? So there's just something that says, there's a weakness there. You got to get away from me. Uh, you got to get out of me, <laughs> get out of here, or whatever. We got to get you gone. Yet he says, um, for the kind and merciful and gracious to the needy, as we're, as we almost like heat seek where people are needy and we're gracious to those areas. It honors God, right? So even my chickens don't know that. It's like, you're, you're needy, I'm taking you out, rather than like, let me help you out here. <laughs> I'll show you where the worms are or the bugs. You know, no, they don't do that. They just start pecking the crud out of that one until they kill it. And so th that is the sinful uh, the nature, and that's the, the sinful way that was released in the fall, right? And so now to reestablish his kingdom, to bring honor to God, we're gracious to the needy. Well, here's where the problem comes uh, in the church and probably all mankind. We then become the judge of who's needy and who's not. Right? And it's hard because people will just lie like dogs sometimes and tell you that they're needy in an area and they're just trying to get something from you. That's a user mentality. So in some sense, they're poor in their soul in that area, but they actually know what they're doing in a sinful way towards you. They're robbing from you, right? So they might be needy, but they've, they've already put out there first that they're going to rob from you. So that's, that's, one, that's one aspect to look at it. But the problem where the, uh, the church um, comes involved, where people, when I say the church, I mean the overall body of Christ, is we're not good at deciphering what's a need. You have to be good at it, and you have to be good at it in the spirit. There's something about um, just knowing, you know, go give financially to that person, go talk to that person, take time with them. Yeah, they're, but they're, they're just poor, and they're just going to suck you dry, and they're going to well, readjust how you spend time with them. You know, there's something to it where um, we're not good at de defining what a need is. Let's see. Here, I just looked up in the dictionary. Oh, now it doesn't love me. Um, I have that problem a lot with this phone. Anyway, the word needy, of course, means 
having a need. Um, being in want, uh, you know, to it's marked by want of affection, attention, emotional support, financial support, anything that puts you in want, right? So Psalms 23 says, the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not even want. We're not going to want if we're the sheep following him, right? And, and we're all needy. And we come into his fold and he meets our needs. That's what, and he gives us, he gives us life and he gives it abundantly to us. That's what causes us to lie down in green pastures. Then he restores our soul. He leads us beside still waters. And we're just restored within our soul. Our mind, our will, and our emotions is like, yeah, we're complete in him. That's the goal, right? But, um, when, when the demonic realm, when um, darkness or our own strongholds can keep reiterating the fact that I want to make this poor area that you have as heavy as possible. Like it says, he who oppresses the poor taunts, taunts and insults his maker. That anything that causes it to be so heavy in that poor area that it's like, this is going to break my back. I don't think I can ever stand up again. This is is sucking the life out of me. Literally, uh, that force, whether it be the force of sin or the demonic realm or whatever it is, your your own poor life commands, what it what's doing is it's weighing down so much. But literally, it says you're taunting the one who made this person, or you're taunting the one who made you. Um, and and so. It's a bad spot for the demons to be in because all you have to do is cry out for God and his blessing overtakes the curse and lifts that oppressive heaviness off. So part of dealing with opposition is knowing how to get under his care in such a way he lifts the heaviness off because wherever you're poor is where the opposition wants to go after. It, like I said, it leaves your rich areas alone pretty much. Because you're so rich in it, doesn't matter if the attack comes, you're like, <laughs> whatever. I got leftover stuff in this area. So you took that one little thing. I'm, I'm just going to invest more into the kingdom. This is going to multiply. And there ain't nothing you can do about it, devil. But that poor area in your soul or um, in your heart or in your way of thinking or in your checkbook or in your body or whatever, that's the one he's like, I, I got to touch that area again. And I'm going to taunt the maker when I do it. I'm going to make it heavy. I'm going to oppress that. And so part of what will happen is small things, when you learn how to deal with opposition, you don't look at the opposition once it's arrived in full-fledged. It's been arriving for a while before it comes up to this full-fledged attack. So we get better at wisdom says, I see the past, I know the now, I see the future. We'll get better at when we come before the Lord in the fear of the Lord, asking him to show us the choice part of wisdom. And that's the, the fear of the Lord gives us the beginning or the choice part of wisdom, right? It's the beginning of wisdom. And it opens up where we can see, oh, we see this bigger picture. See, poverty sees right here. I don't know how many eat. It's all the farther it sees. You know, for a lot of people who are stuck in that spot, they, they're, they're so stuck down in that one uh, little way of thinking. They're not seeing the job. They're not seeing all the opportunities, the helps that are out there, the people that could help. They just see that. Where wisdom will open it up. And then all of a sudden you're seeing, you can see where prosperity will lie, where you've been robbed from and where you've been added to. And then what that does is it gives you, wisdom will give you the sense of like, hmm, I can feel something trying to oppose me. But you feel it way out here, right? When you're a victim to it, you ain't feeling much. You're just feeling uncomfortable. You're not identifying. You're just trying to survive your moment. And all of a sudden, bam, something happens. And you're like, oh, I just got opposed. Actually, you were being opposed long before it showed up. It, it was, it's that kind of bow constrictor slowly tightening around you. That's the way the devil works. Because deception, it works better that way. To deceive you all at once in the moment right now, I mean, there is an operation of that. But the better form of deception is a slow lie that builds from the outside and works its way in. And suddenly you're like, I, I am totally opposed right now. I have opposition coming at me for, I don't know where this came from. It was coming for a long time. It was coming maybe for months. It was coming maybe for a year or weeks. 
and suddenly it culminates at that moment and you <gasps> see then it's like how do I get out of this and it'll feel like it's impossible so today is just exposing that plan and we begin to ask God for a type of wisdom that shows us hmm, I want to know way ahead of time what the opposition is way ahead of time now sometimes um, you know we've had to buy properties and stuff over the years and my husband's very good at business and and uh, I, I get in there and try to think on the emotional side and how this would affect and we kind of teamwork that together but one of the things I've always done is let's think of the best that could happen in this situation what would God want to use this property for and whatever you just let your mind go whoo and and God show me show me what your intention is and all then you shut that off and set it to the side and let, it's like let's think evil What's the worst thing that could happen here? What's the plan? Out of all of this, what would be the plan of how he would want to come in? Now, you don't get fearful and paranoid about that. You just know your enemy. You just know the workings. You just go, hmm, if I was the devil, <laughs> in my most evil thinking, and I'm not as evil as he is, I would think like this. This is where I would want to rip you off in this. This is where this would, you know, and, you, and you've and you got the two sides. Wisdom will show you that. So then you take the, the blessing side and you shore up the weak side. Well, it hasn't happened yet. Exactly. You shore it up before it does. As many holes as you can plug, you plug those holes. And then when that one little side that you didn't realize comes or whatever, whatever, it's not that big of an opposition then because you already took care of all kinds of things. But a lot of times Christians will walk into, I've seen this on the mission, they'll walk into like a, 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 a new situation. And I've seen it on the mission field I, uh, when we went with uh, Rich Apfelt. Um, and he was explaining different things uh, about different groups that had gone or whatever. They're just excited. They just want to go minister. So they get in and they're just like, I'm going to go minister. And that's all they're thinking about. You're thinking about everything that's the best of what can happen. Because praise God, we're with God. But they're not thinking how the devil's thinking. I mean, there is a plan. They, you're not wanted there. So you got to think ahead of that. But learn to do it non, uh, where you're not afraid or paranoid. It's just like, hmm, we are at war. You count the costs before you go to war yeah, that's right. from every angle. You count the costs, and, you, and then, then you first go into where you need to be going into. So the point of this morning is um, he oppresses the, oppresses the poor, taunts and insults his maker, is how slow moving in of making the poor area in your life so heavy because that's part of the meaning to oppress is a heaviness coming on you just making it so heavy that it slowly breaks your back it's not a suddenly it's just let's add another rock to the backpack we're just going to keep moving it they don't even know it's just getting heavier every day right and then the true opposition then is all of a sudden when you can't get up anymore because there's so, you're so weighted down and you're like, how did this happen? I never saw this coming. See, we have to think this way as leaders uh, in the church or prayer people when we're praying. We're always praying out ahead. If we're just dealing with what's in front of us right now, we are poor in prayer. That's why the prophetic calls out ahead. Here's where you're going. Right? And you go, okay, let's pray that through until it manifests. Right? It won't tell you necessarily all the time this is what's happening right at this moment. If it does, the, the prophetic word will say, here's the moment, but that's where you're going. Because that's how God thinks, big picture. And in the big picture, we have to go detail to detail to get there. And in oppressing you, in whatever area you're poor, that's how the devil works. Let me hit your detail to detail till you're so weighted down, the opposition so great, you can't get up again. So the victory is not just having victory in the thing. It's having victory detail to detail as you walk toward what was prophesied over you. Does that make sense? So, um, so that's part of it. And, and know that wherever the demonic or sin itself is trying to weigh you down that is taunting and insulting to our maker i'm telling my dad 
That's what goes through me when I, when I hear that. It's like, you know, you're on the playground or whatever, and someone is oppressing you. Whatever. I'm telling my dad. I mean, that's the feeling that comes up. Like, you are insulting my father. You are insulting the God who is rich and is my, and I'm a son to, a daughter to. You are insulting. You think you're going to get away with this? See, there's a power in just knowing that. How dare you weigh me down? His burden is light. Whew, get off of me. Get off of me. I'm not carrying this. I'm going to walk through the fire and not be burned. I'm going to walk through the river, and it won't overtake me, the waters. They're not going to overtake. It didn't say you get out of it. It's how you walk through that makes the greater victory. Who wants to walk through the fire totally oppressed, carrying a heavy weight? You don't even know if you can get through the thing. Rather than, I'm just going to go through this fire. Ooh, it's hot in here. Right? There, there's something about him making it so light that you're so free that um, that opposition doesn't touch you. I'm not afraid. See? So, but he who is kind and merciful and gracious to the needy honors him. So to determine who's needy, wherever there's a lack. Sometimes people will ask you for money, but their real lack is in their soul, not their checkbook. And to be wise, um, we need to be able to discern how can we operate in such a way. Sometimes, sometimes I'll still give a person money just like, oh, they'll probably use it on cigarettes or whatever, but I want them to know I care. But then there is, as you press into relationship, there is a little bit more required. I want to uh, attack the area where you're really poor. Your financial situation is not it. There's a heart issue here. See that? So, um, so let's get the oppression off of us, but know that if it's been a slow squeeze on you, lots of rocks added to your backpack, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, that is insulting to our God. You're not insulting him. The oppressor is. You don't do that to our father and get away with it, right? And so, and he was kind and merciful and gracious to the needy, needy honors him. I want to read uh, Matthew chapter 25. These are scriptures that are rarely preached on. I think because most people don't know how to do it. Uh, this Matthew 25 verse 31 concept. Um, without people either feeling condemned or something, but it's an intense passage. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and majesty and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Whew, very thing we fell short of. All the nations will be gathered before him for judgment, and he will separate them from one another as shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right, the place of honor, and the goats on his left, the place of rejection. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you blessed of my father. What side you on? You blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation. That would be me. I don't know about you. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. See, that's all lack. Those are areas of lack. With help and you ministered care. I was in prison and you came to me ignoring personal danger. Then the then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and you and gave you something to drink? And when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick and in prison and come up to you? The king will answer and say to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, like when he ever says something like that, that's like saying I ain't playing, right? I assure you. And I most solemnly say to you, to the extent that you did it for one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it for me. So he's wanting us in a position to receive the blessing and learn a stewardship how to give that out and meet needs. And so sometimes 
Sometimes we're not good at it, and we just got to get back in there and try it again, right? Sometimes that's just how it works. But we're learning to stewardship his love and his blessing. Otherwise, he would not have, uh, have said, um, come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. That's powerful. Let's stand. Let's stand. So, so God doesn't like oppression in any form. A weightedness, a heaviness, and those who oppress the poor actually are mocking uh, our father. They're taunting our father because he is absolute rich. He is absolute wanting to pour out his love, and in love there's absolute, uh, all of our needs are met. So any area right now, I always like to clean up stuff first because I think that's how the Holy Spirit works. Any area where we have oppressed the poor, God, we ask forgiveness. As a church, as a people where we have judged in any way and said, well, they shouldn't have to have that, and I don't see, and they need to learn this, and da-da-da-da, and, and we backed away from people, or we, we made heavier their spot. God, forgive us. We are not perfect. But you are the perfection we're headed toward. We're sorry, Lord. Forgive this body. Forgive TBO, Lord God. Forgive us as a church and as individuals. See, that can, that can be kind of heavy. But see, what we're trying to do is get that great sending away to send this away so we can start new and steward this a little bit different.